Dan Eilson, Director of Health. So for um, October activities, the permits are still very strong. Um, as you can see, complaints were up um, with mostly garbage and that's comes in cycles and that's mostly downtown here at Morse Court and behind Town Hall. Gino's done a good job of um, dealing with that and getting them to get it corrected. Uh, tick submissions are also up with the warmer weather, even the last few days, a lot of people coming in with the ticks. Um, FEP grant update. I submitted quarter one financial report and that was in the amount of uh, $1,738.76 for reimbursement. That covers our part-time preparedness coordinator, Nick Jossum. Um, Region one is planning on, on Wednesday, December 18th, a community and faith-based stakeholder forum. So all region one health departments, human service departments, and then um, Houses of war Worship, Faith-Based CERT, community and regional nonprofits are all gonna come together at um, Sacred Heart University, the old GE campus, and um, have what they're calling a seat at the table, building inclusive collaborations for di disaster response and recovery. So um, looking forward to that. Uh, did send it to Russ Kimes. He's gonna distribute within his network as well. Um, going back to environmental for a minute, we just started relicensing as well. Um, this will be the first year of the renewals in OpenGov. So that all went out on November 1st without a hitch. They're due by December 31st. Um, and part of that restaurant relicensing process also includes um, the tax collector and assessor sign-offs um, like we did last year. So that's still going strong. Community health events. Um, obviously it's a uh, flu season, so they're doing flu clinics still in addition to the normal um, blood sugar, blood pressure screenings. And um, yes, Jim? I was just gonna say, Shannon, also you could add to this, is not on the list of making a really terrific presentation of the men's club oh. on vaccinations and all the good stuff that we're working on. So you should make sure she gets credit. <laughs> yeah, well, we we don't put I don't put the meetings that we attend on here because ah, this would be thirty count. pages okay. long. All right. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is just the actual programs that we do. All right. Um, well, this was an important program because a lot of we handed out a lot of uh, those flyers and uh, got a lot of questions. Good. So she did that at the next one. Probably yes. Did she do it by herself? Or? Well, I teed it up as part of the. Recruiting for the wellness survey, and then in order to get people's attention, put some real content on the board, on the board with uh, with the health department. Good job. Good job. Good job. Um, getting back to the community events, we also did a lunch and learn with staying put um, with Dr. L. Demole um, regarding healthy skin, and that was uh, very well attended at Lapham with over 40 people, so that was great. Um, Shannon completed her choice of Medicare counselor training and she already began a couple weeks ago doing that. So every Thursday she's at Lapham to help Aggie do um, the choices training and she's really enjoyed doing that. Uh, Deb and Shannon also took FEMA ICS 100 emergency response training to get the basics of the structure of incident command. Is CPR is not part of incident command. No, it's not part of the FEMA structure. It's a separate thing. Um, and then all your charts are attached for your updates. If you have any questions, I also did um, for on behalf of Lauren Patterson send out a last call for the community health well-being survey. So that was sent out to um, our 1,807 people we have in our health group in Everbridge. Does anyone know the participation? They have. I heard they had a thousand people respond, which. 
Yeah. 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 Plus. We'll see when we get the data. <laughs> I can tell you right now if you want to work. Well, I know a little bit of seniors who are well represented. Sure. And, uh, we did get paper flyers too from Lauren Patterson that um, I gave to Shannon and Ellen to give out at Lapham when they were doing their clinics, and then we returned them back to Lauren. So they did try to do all the different avenues through the YMCA listserv, library listserv, you know, all that stuff. So who else was representing? I mean, women. Yeah. <laughs> <Socially represented. laughs> And 20 to 40, surprisingly, goes into the line. Oh, age group. Relative to the overall uh, yeah. demographic. Just when life feels most frantic. Okay? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's great. He's awesome. oh, while we're, uh, got a second. The opioid surveillance shows four people over 50 in the first 90 days. Uh, I mean, are these people who are smoking too much weed or it's not an opioid. <laughs> it doesn't it's not an opioid weed is not an opioid but um sorry <laughs> but again <laughs> that's <laughs> it it does <laughs> Jim these this data and these charts again come from the EDs and they don't give you the back context because they're not supposed to identify the patient. It's not a reportable disease. So it's just for data purposes only, where an actual reportable disease, you get the whole client information. So it could just be misuse of like pain management. Correct. And that's most likely what it is. It's usually a prescription drug or something like that. Do they, does that detail float down to the health department? No, because again, it's not a reportable disease, so they can't get into the details that can possibly identify that patient because of state law so, and HIPAA laws. So did you do anything to celebrate environmental health? Um, it's tomorrow. So I'm, yeah, we're, I'm buying breakfast for all my staff. Yeah, it's tomorrow. The governor declared um, tomorrow Environmental Health Professionals Day. Yes. <laughs> So what are you doing for me, Russ? Yeah. <laughs> the long line. Um, it's just um, Russ Barksdale. When we're looking at the suicidal ideations and o opioid, as you know, August 29th, the week, you know, just pops up. Was there anything that we can tie to any stressors or anything of that nature? Was ACTs during that week, or is there anything? Is anything that when school started? First week of school. Yeah. School starts. Okay. Jen, do you have any getting a sense of the outlook for the the winter in terms of what the professionals are saying in terms of what we might expect from the usual outlook flu disease suspects? Yeah, particularly open. It's no, the flu is kind of started early again, you know, this year, but nothing drastic. And they don't know really what strain yet because that's always later on that gets parceled out. Just like the flu shot, they kind of have to guess what is going to happen. I have a question about that. When you have this one chart that has the, there's 18 cases in the current week and 67, is that just for McCain or is that? No, that's state. That's the whole state mm -hmm. that's reported. Mm -hmm. right? And that those, again, are only associated with those that actually went and got tested. So those that just go to primary care and are diagnosed with flu, that's not part of any of that. Yeah. Feels like Yeah, that's probably a 10% representation. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it's statewide, those numbers are pretty low. So. Exactly. Peter, just 
looking at the climate change thing and you can chime in. Yeah. It's these diseases like influenza, et cetera, used to be very defined as to the months. It's it's all over the place now. Yeah. So flu, RSV, COVID, et cetera. So we just take it as it comes. And the, the numbers will tell us, but there's no defined season. Mm. Um, allergies have gotten a lot worse as mm. well, we're seeing in the yeah. same population prolonged and um, mm. and flu, I think, will be prolonged as well. Mm -hmm. I think you see that when you look at the you know the mosquito surveillance charts that, that she has on them and they uh and the ticks virus and the ticks. Yep. Yeah. There's no frost to kill them off. <laughs> well, isn't that a happy note? <laughs> <laughs> okay, see what you can do here, Susan. <laughs> That's it, Jen? Yes. Okay, thank you. Human Services. Marcy Rand, Director of Human Services. Um, for second quarter in October, our adult and senior clients, that number was raised yesterday and I did not, um, I didn't fix it because it's technically November, but we have 226 seniors. We have 154 families, 162 children. Um, who are now actively participating in some sort of our programs. Um, there were three domestic violence cases in October. Um, I won't bore you with all of the meetings that we attended, uh, but the food pantry, that number is also consistent and large. We have 136 household individuals and 122 shoppers came to the food pantry in October. Um, our support groups are going well. Coffee with a Cop had eight attendees. Unfortunately, um, our community impact officer is no longer. She is our school resource officer now. So um, I'm not sure exactly who they're going to name as like a community impact officer. There isn't going to be one in our office anymore, but there will be one. So whoever's on duty will be named that and that will be our contact, but I don't know who that is. And so I don't know if I'm gonna be able to continue like community outreach with those officers or if they're technically on patrol or if they can take an hour to do like special duty with me and do something at Lapham. So I will talk to the um, deputy chief about that. So this is Nicole Bartuli. Yeah. So she's, what will she be doing at school? Uh, she's going to be the SRO for South School. Right now, Officer Deke is out on medical leave. So she is sort of a floater for all the schools right now. So mm -hmm. she can't float back and forth, I guess. Yeah, no, she's at this. She is officially at hey, the schools so now. Nice How many school. SROs are there in the town? How many positions do we have? Four, are there? One, two, three, five, five. 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 One for each school. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, our grief group, my grief group, is still running strong. We had 50 total in um, October. We do have one new member, so that number will go up. 50 different people. No, there are like 11. 11. This that's, is just, you know, that's per a week. monthly number, right? Yeah, this is a monthly. So it's about 10 per week. Okay. But they, um, they come. No matter what, they you know change plans to come and yeah, it's right. good, it's good. And it was really nice. I had one new person last uh, this past Tuesday who was very, very sad, and there were a lot of tears. And her husband had died in July, and then her brother had died about a month ago. And so she was really, and it was so nice to see these like, you know, quote healthier grieving individuals like build her up and say like, we were you nine months ago and, and like look men, we can laugh men, men. there are two men in the group yeah. yeah 72 and 75 and marcy how long do they uh stay is it kind of an it's, episode you know i didn't or? make it a closed like i didn't make it an eight-week group it's sort of a running group and i right. think when people feel healthier they'll come less and less often yeah. you know they'll find other things to occupy that like empty space that they had. So like right now, they're all coming because like, I think that that's something for them to look okay. forward to. Um, but, you know, one of the men actually started driving for um, 
the get about, uh, not get about for staying put. And so like, he's starting to fill his time. And so we may be, you know, something that he sort of steps away from, which is what you want. I mean, you want that. That's, that's what I was wondering is because there's the momentary right. um, uh, transition kind of phase. But I'm wondering if the being together, it, it might stretch on a little bit longer because mm -hmm. that feeling of community, right. you know, you've talked about, I, I would just summarize your understanding of that dynamic. Yeah, I, I mean, I think they are using it for that. And um, they, like I said, they've all asked for each other's phone numbers. And I know that a couple have like taken walks at like Lapham and at Irwin together. And it's so good to see. So they are learning to like find joy, you know? And I think that's, that's just our goal. That's the goal of this group. And so I didn't want to, like I said, I didn't want to make it a fixed right. like eight week program. Cause that's not what this is. And you can't make grief be a fixed amount of time. So there are people who been grieving for two years. There are people who've been grieving for six months. Mm -hmm. Do you have any feeling for whether this supplements the church's bereavement groups or whether it supplants them? Uh, in a couple cases, it uh, supplements. And in a couple cases, you know, there are some who are there are some who are super religious who will, I know that there's a grief group that's very popular at St. Matthew's. I don't know about St. Aloysius, but St. Matthew's has been mentioned a lot in Norwalk. Um, but they also use this, you know, because they are sort of newer grievers. Yeah. And like, they're looking for things to occupy their Got time. Um, but. And sometimes it's a privacy issue yeah. as well. You know, the, the, their face, their outward face with people that they normally hang out with. Uh, they don't want to see when they're grieving and they want to see, right. you know, be, be in a support group. I mean, you think about AA, you think about whatever, you know, sometimes you don't want to play your hand out to, you know, your friends and everybody else. And you want to give that, you know, that, that I, I still totally frame agree. that, you know, everything is fine and you're doing well. And, and it's great that they, they can find an outlet, new group of friends that, yeah maybe can be more candid in what they're going through than Absolutely. they would be if they were in a more formal structure. I mean, I'm, having I'm community like resources, I think is really terrific in this area. Yeah, yeah. no, I am, I'm like that. Is, I am thrilled with this program. Like it's yeah. so nice to see, and it's so nice to see the support. Like we all know that group support is, is good and it's supposed to do what it does, but it, when you watch it do what it's supposed to do, it's fantastic, so. Yeah. Great. Nelson Aloysius has a grief group yeah. also. Um, I don't know about the other. Yeah, I don't. St. Mark's has a okay. uh, up and down yeah. group. But that's the reason why having a community operation is a yeah. substantial underpinning to all the reasons that Russ talked about. Well, and I, you know, and I think grief groups um, in a religious like atmosphere it's just very different, you know, because like sometimes people aren't comfortable talking about maybe moving on or maybe socializing with the opposite mm. sex or like we are like, we're okay with it all, you know? And I think that that, so like, you know, they may get something from the church group, but they get something else yeah, from this. Group. Terrific. So. That's it. What was the age of the person who lost her husband and brother? Uh, she was, she's Probably. 80. Okay. And you know, that's the other thing, like there are some really long illnesses, you know, somebody who feels like they should be in a better place because this person had say prostate cancer for 14 years. And like, she thought she had done her grieving before and she hadn't. And then there are others who husbands, you know, died of like massive heart attacks and, you know, but it's the same sort of grief. Well, I mean, someone suffering with Alzheimer's needs a certain type of support, yeah. right? As a, as a spouse, one who has terminal illness that's in hospice needs a different type. And I think everyone has a different grieving period as you, you've described. And it's important you have as many channels that they can reach out to. Right. But coming to a, a group setting like this, I think is less threatening, yeah. maybe, and being able to start and be more open and honest with your feelings and what's going on in your life, your social life and things of that nature, I think is, would be hard. Great.
Yeah, speaking of uh, Alzheimer's, this is, this is an FYI. So I got a call from a physician in another town, um, told me a physician friend of his was very concerned about his wife and developing dementia. And he said, well, I'll call someone. So, so I, he called me, I did remind him I was a pediatrician, but whatever. Um, <laughs> yeah. I did, I did. I'm glad you remember. Okay, I'll get, I'll get, I'll get, I'll get, try to get an answer, you know, and get back to you. So I did call Marcy, who was great. And then I, you know, called another person, got some information. So just, this is an FYI and I'll give you the info later. So for assessments, it's, Greenwich has their, what there was, it's Greenwich Hospital Center for Healthy Aging. That's one. And Greens at Cannondale is another. So in Waveney we, used to do this. We, right? we still do. You do? Yeah, we still okay. call a physician. We have a, I don't, I don't want to self-promote, but mm -hmm. we have a navigator program that now for if you have Alzheimer's or dementia, you can, you can be put on the navigator program and that navigator program but it's only for new Canaanites right now. So it's limited. Now is uh, that if, if a family member is concerned, you are capable of doing like a full on geriatric assessment? We, we, can, we can do everything. We can okay. push in the assessment. We can provide support <laughs> for you. Mm -hmm. we, can, um, we can do a lot of things. Uh, we got an adult okay. day program, social adult day program. So you can have free time. Um, we, do, we do all those things. And we have three, three people that are uh, on call 24 seven. So you hit, hit a button on your phone and it calls one of the three, whoever's on call. So but that's for New Canaan. Yeah, and yeah. but isn't it kind of part of point two? It's, it's support for the caregiver. So as completely much as, support for the caregiver. Yeah, However, if, if, yeah, if, if the caregiver is looking for initial, a place to have right. an assessment right. or they have questions like on pharmacy, we get a lot of questions on anticholinergic studies and things of that nature, then we are, we're navigating for them, right. basically. So, um, it's yeah. It's a great resource for- Is any of that caregivers. available to Medicare? Uh, it is not from our perspective. This is a free service that we provide. Okay. But of course, when you go and get tested, uh, that is, that is, there's a bill okay. for that, of which Medicare covers, I think, once a year. I will tell people, and again, I'll get off my soapbox in, a, in less than five seconds, but Medicare has gone through a lot of changes. So for those people that you're consulting with on Medicare insurance, take the time and look at the changes that are occurring in 2025. They're substantial. Um, but yes, th those things are covered with Medicare in terms of the assessments. But uh, to, to um, Harrison's point, it's important to know for the general public where those, those areas are where they can go get assessed. Um, and it's important that our physicians know where they can. Yeah, so I've yeah. So Greens at County is a Dr. Roden who does the work there. There's also a Dr. Allison um, McAlone. Um, she's in Wilton mm -hmm. and does this geriatric assessment, I think associated with Stanford Hospital. Marcy gave me the name of uh, Susan Doyle, which is part of Oasis is the name of the company. And they just start senior advising. She, so I spoke to her. She was great, by the way. And do you know her? Mm -hmm. um, so it was that they don't do the assessments there, but everything else beyond the assessment in terms of homes and how to structure the homes for someone with Alzheimer's, is, you know, long-term care, you know, short-term care, whatever it may be. So that's I'm glad just you FYI. Glad you and Russ Waveney will do the assessment mm -hmm. and they will... Yeah, we, we, will, we will go to your home. Um, we will work with you, you'll follow you. We're there for the caregiver, mostly in support of them. Um, so it's an assessment, um, talking to them about the next stage of Alzheimer's and what that's going to look like to prepare you. And we also have support groups that, that come together and, and share their, their life stories. But um, it's because of that is a, a donor specific grant for us uh we're only limited to you know people that live uh in new canaan but uh um it's a lot of people i mean and you think about the early stages of alzheimer's dementia and being able to get on top of it early plus having the caregiver understand these are the stages to prepare yourself for which can be physical which can be you know disruptive uh to your sleep it can be disruptive to your life mm -hmm. Um, and then also feeling that you have some respite time. How do you, how do you provide respite for the caregiver? Um, uh, it's extremely important for their own mental health. Is the program uh, 
fully occupied now, fully busy, or? Um, we, we, we have three full-time, um, um, counselors, if you will. One's a, one's a nurse, one's a social worker and, and one's an administrator. Um, we could probably take on, um, you know, another 20 or 30 individuals without having to expand more. I think the adult day program, the social day program is what we're moving to next because people want to take four hours and just hang out with their friends or do something, play golf or do something and they don't want to have to worry about their, their loved one uh, at all. So um, uh, we try to be holistic as much as we can, but really there in support of the caregiver. Thank you. Um, thank you, Marcy. Mm -hmm. All business, we did discuss the community health and well-being survey to an extent. So 10%. I think the goal was more like 20, 25%, if I'm not mistaken, but if they're happy with 10%, they're happy with it. Any comments on taking it? One of the so, things I'm interested in, which I have talked to Lauren about, and you might know, uh, will they be able to break out by age demographics, men, women, age? That'd be terrific, because I'm very interested to see why the seniors are not participating in the urgent assessment program. And I've got a feeling the answer is in that research. I thought the survey was excellent. I, I, I really hit very thorough and, and asked really good questions. And there's sort of this point where they segue into what, how you feel and what you're, what's up with you, but it's very subtle. <laughs> you know, I thought it was really, um, really well, well written and, you know, well, great. it was easy to take and feel really comfortable taking it. Did a great job. Yeah, one question I had was when you get to the severity issue, is this severity mm. because of the number or because of the the disease or whatever the entity is in of itself? So that was a little it's hard to tease that out when you're doing it. So mm. it's mm. I think a lot is in the interpretation of these surveys. Okay. New business grants. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> so um, I think we'll just we'll discuss them. We'll see ask. what we come to. Yeah. Did, did anyone, um, anyone bring, bring their bring their own paperwork that I handed out last night? Yeah. You're all good. Good. Anyone want one? We got limited oh, copies. No, no. I'll I'll take one and pass it down, please. And then yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure I have them all. Yeah. Done so a lot last, of work, Marcy. <laughs> last year, I think we allotted two hundred thirty-six thousand five hundred dollars. This year, when you look through these, we're about two fifty-eight thousand eight hundred fifty. So well, you'll be happy to know there are a few small changes. If you look at this little sheet, yeah, my um, where's that? This one. One page. Page. The one pager. It's coming um, to you. It's oh, I don't have it. Thank you. Maybe in there. Um, no. no. It thought you better be on its way. I think it's, yeah. Oh, it's, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> we found the Melissa. Oh, yeah. The cog in the wheel there. Okay. Um, that's the new one. Yeah, um, I don't know if you want to start yeah, just up at the top. Yeah, let's go. Let's start. Okay, so we've been. Re requested to keep it, you know, flat, if not lower. So um, the get about, I suggest keeping it at 50,000. Kids in crisis, keeping it at 96. New Keenan Cares at 18. Child guidance, um, I have their numbers. I did not photocopy those for you. Um, there was a belief that if we gauge child guidance, our residents would sort of be like put up at the top of the list that's not really ethical and that's not how child guidance works mm -hmm. in any way so, um they happen to get 27 million in grants and they get 117 million in patient revenue um and at the end of the year you know they are not wealthy but they do have a a net income of 183,000. so I'm suggesting that that 5,000 um, not really be used for 
um, Do other child towns guidance. like Duquesne support them in a, with a grant? No. We are one of the few towns okay. who do. Thank you. Um, so you're recommending me not to? I recommend grant. not to. Yeah, it's not sense. it's yeah. not helping well, us yeah. in any in any way. So what this point, continue the I, percent. that is my recommendation. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah, there are some changes there too. Dr. Welts, who was there, was was phenomenal. I think she has left, correct? Okay. I don't you know what? Um, I don't know that. Maybe yeah, I she was I mean suicide was her definitely. Yeah. And they know. <laughs> <laughs> it was very good. No, so sure. there are changes there, and it is, as Marcy said, it's a big corporation. Right, and so I don't think five thousand dollars is keeping their lights on. I I don't mm -hmm. think um, it's helping when Jackie makes a phone call and refers to them. Mm -hmm. We are not, you know, getting in the next day. We have this wonderful urgent assessment program that. Um, and, and Marcy, remember and, and remind the commission, uh, yeah. we're, we were, from a philosophical standpoint, I think all on the same page, we were going to shrink the number of agencies, organizations that we help, but provide additional resources. So it's a meaningful, a meaningful amount. And I think that we yeah. can follow along with that. Right. Yeah, I shrunk the number of the, the numbers we went from. Yeah. So uh, to seven now, maybe six. Um, the DVCC, we should continue with the Before 10, we leave that, Marcy, yeah. it's just the relationship, you know, when you discontinue well, funding these You things. know, I, I mean, I can write a super good note. This <laughs> and is on the record. This is on, I can, I, but I can, I mean, like, applaud. <laughs> I can, uh, they are an amazing organization. Um, and, you know, I don't think this is going to be, like, okay. something that's going to be hard feelings. And Jackie has great relationship with them. Uh, this is not because we don't don't value them. We are we are on a sort of a, a strict budget, and that's we're going to sort of try to stick as right. much as we can. And Jackie's to this okay budget. with this. Did they Jackie's get a grant okay from this. the community foundation? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They did. Oh, Expected more than five thousand. Yes. Yep. So yeah. that may not and if no happen. other towns are doing it, I think that's yeah. yeah an indication. Yeah. All right. So they're getting some money from the county. Mm -hmm. I mean, the foundation. I don't know. Haven't definitely. Done believes in being part of a long-term sure. um, foundational support. I mean, right. they, they go up and down depending on results. Yeah. And if there's concerns about what's going on internally, they may. Right. And this is yeah. not something that's like a forever thing. Like if it comes to the point, you know, in a couple of years that they need us, then we revisit that. I... Yeah. Because you were they asked for money for the mobile crisis intervention unit and we sort of are addressing that in some, <clears throat> some other ways. And and the urgent assessment program affect the, the traffic for the child guidance? Because they're, they respond to emergency situations. They do. So, they're a little bit different. Like you can call mobile crisis 24 hours right. a day um, and, right. and talk to someone. Um, but urgent assessment may or may not like refer to child guidance the way we would also, you know, like if we have a client who could use it. Mm -hmm. Move on. Yes. On, yes. on the question on the get about. Yep. It's just 25K from the town. Yeah. 25 from the. That's uh, a matching grant that is given by the state. Okay. Is that. Um, Get about stuff counting on that as a as a separate source of funding. They're saying we're going to get twenty five from the state and fifty from the, no, 65. it's combined. They're just assuming they're going to get fifty thousand. They know it's including that. 20, yes. Okay. Yeah. In fact, they give me quarterly numbers that the they I then yes, yeah, it's exactly okay. the same as last year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the DVCC ten thousand meals on wheels five thousand and then New Canaan urgent assessment their request was for fifty thousand I spoke to Susanna it's now down to forty thousand because insurance companies are starting to value the service okay. and wow. starting That's to pay great. for this all awesome. right so that was her yes she changed that yes. after the she changed it after she sent okay. yeah. That's great. so I, we kind of feel like these allocations are you know enhancing mental health support they're providing you know for suicidal ideation i and for um you know get about in meals on wheels is helping with isolation 
um, and the substance abuse, like all of our priorities, I feel like are being covered with these. And a little bit more concentrated mm -hmm. investment, which I think was a theme that we talked about. Is Meals on Wheels mostly seniors? Or, yeah, I assume that. Yeah. And is it a, how would I phrase this politically? Profitable, as it were, or is it a major drain on Waveney? Um, I'm, I'm going to have to recuse myself, as everyone knows, from the Meals on Wheels vote. But um, Waveney does pr produce the, the meals for the Meals on Wheels program. And we're not looking at it as a profit. I mean, this is a this is a mission driven program for yeah. seniors who are isolated, you know. So um, that's just part of our mission. Well, I, went, I went liaison. to the yeah I went to the Meals on Wheels board meeting um, this month, and I was extremely impressed with with everybody there. And um, and they do um, they they break even on their budget, um, but they raise most of their money through donations, individuals, and right. um, and grants. Right. It's about one hundred and twenty thousand dollars, uh, and and their expenses are are covered. By, by you know by some additional funding that they get, um, but it's just this really nice group of people. I was there during their meeting, and they were Michelle Sloan is the chair. I don't know if anybody knows Michelle, but her mom is at the inn, and and she you know she's very sensitive to to what's going on. Um, they were doing their annual appeal during the meeting, and everybody was you know personalizing the letters. I mean they're very efficient, <laughs> but um, but I, you know they're serving seventy percent of the people they're serving are um, on a their sponsor you know their scholarship, and then other people are paying. But um, but they yeah. They uh, really a lot of they do small number but um here we go 12 it's like 12 hold on it's uh 29,000 annual meals delivered and uh for 637 wow. total clients so and then 70 71 percent are subsidized and and uh and i know they coordinate with you marcy and and they're just very grateful for the support that wave and you provides um and, and they're so, and their quality meals too we're not oh, they're doing wonderful. Their you deliver them they lunches. smell pretty good in your car you know, and it's not just one meal, it's like dinner and lunch. And so some of those, those little tiny old ladies make, you know, four meals out of it, right? But um, yeah, I just was super impressed with what they're doing. They've got a great volunteer base and they're also STAR, which is the, um, an organization in town that has, works with kids with disabilities and they're delivering too. So that's a really nice um, way to collaborate within the community. So I, yeah, I would recommend Meals on Wheels was also a personal socialization exactly. opportunity yeah. for many Exactly, yeah. Jim. I mean, sometimes so you can't get out the door because yeah. they really want to chat. They're waiting by the door. And, yeah. yeah, and it is, it is a, there's a lot of talk about social isolation and you know, really. really trying to address yeah. it. I mean, meal preparation is hard when you get to be a certain age. And sure. It, it, age. It, yeah. <laughs> but especially. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. And Good yeah. call, Mills on Wheels at one eight. Anybody can. Yeah, it, I mean, it makes a difference in whether you can stay. Yeah. At home or not. Stay at home. And cannot. Yeah. You know the amount of money. Yeah. And I think for families who don't live in town, if their parents are older, they just love the idea that they're getting some food delivered because they're not always sure. You know. Yeah. Now, sometimes if you put it in the fridge, you think, well, oh, some of this probably should go away because it's been sitting here for a week or two, right? But um, yeah, but I think it's a great resource and I think really. Funny. After Russ's buildup, I wonder what time should I stop by this evening? <laughs> <laughs> and, you and how about delivery? So Barb and I did deliver once or twice or whatever meals. Do the, are they in need of people to deliver the meals? Are they okay with that? Um, I think they can always use volunteers, but the line of people, cars that line up outside of our building um, that bring the meals, I mean, they are unbelievable. And uh, um, and very dedicating, you see, and the get about participates yeah, in it right. as well. They have the so, sign up genius, and so they have a lot of people that just go and yeah. sign up on their own, like we did. Um, and they also have an angel list, so if somebody can't, all of a sudden they're short somebody, they can call them. Spruce they're spruce extremely spruce. well organized very in organized. terms of getting the meals out quickly. I was wondering if Harrison's going to sign up for Meals on Wheels, whether I could sign up for urgent assessment, and that would not be a conflict of interest. <laughs> We're going to be $20,000, Jim. Jim, you'd be doing the advisory. No, but I would encourage everybody to do it once because you really do see, it's just, it, and it takes about two hours, not even, right? And I should do, I know we're on um, the budget, 
but I forgot something and I should do one quick shout out to the New Canaan Police Department. Um, for Thanksgiving, we usually give gift cards. Mm -hmm. This year, the New Canaan Police Department is donating turkeys and chickens to our food pantry. Oh, wow. So people will be able to go to Acme and oh. pick their own oh, and great. we're giving them vouchers. And uh, so I didn't wanna pack that up. It's not gonna be this input. I think you I think you've done a great job of putting this down and, and keeping it and meeting everybody's needs and criteria. So congratulations Thank on, you. on doing that. So Marcy, so the police are doing this, where are they getting the money? Uh, I don't know if it's like a police union decision. I know that like the firehouse does our Christmas trees out of the firehouse union. So I can ask officer Bartuli where that money is coming from. Um, she did not say. Because we don't want the policemen individually exactly. paying for it. <laughs> Are, are we in a position to make a move a, a motion on the I just said final commission comment. to accept her recommendation just final, final or final comment on urgent uh do we wait till next month? we're not there yet yeah just oh, um urgent assessment the numbers are 15 for uh october which is important they, they're yeah. working hard oh, on that. yes well, yeah peter was at the meeting month. yeah no it's the same they've yeah. a couple months in a row which yeah. is really good the demographics are the same still it's i think 64 percent 20, 26 and younger, right. so it's very much still youth-oriented, seniors still. And they are definitely yeah. in conversations with other towns and not just other yeah. towns like town town. Like I think um, Susanna mentioned 3% of Darien, the three it, the numbers Darien is at 3%, which is, and they're paying privately. So they are actually discussing with the Board of Ed, maybe participating like the, not the town itself right. but the board of ed participating so you know i think like this number next year may even go lower like they may become yeah. like a well-oiled machine and so they're working really hard to improve they're looking at the name yeah. which we've been giving them feedback on because it's a little misleading in terms of what they actually deliver um and this insurance thing is a is a big deal yeah and what they're very conscious of is trying to work on the economics so they're not as dependent on like every year, like a huge slump from the town. They're aware that, I mean, I think it's still a great priority, but they're working to drive it down. Dependent. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I think that goes back to, and it's an excellent point, Peter. Some of these are just ongoing, right? We, we know there's a need and we're gonna every, every year give a check or something similar, maybe more as we cut back. But some of these were startups, right? And these are seed money, right? right? And so New Canaan Urgent Assessment, from my perspective, was a startup. Seed money came from our ARPA funds first. It's a quarter million dollars, and then we funded it. But at some point in time, when you're seeding it, you expect that, you know, they get more towns involved and, and um, more abilities to, the, from the economic standpoint, to be able to stand on their own. But I think those are the, things we need to be able to separate of ongoing versus seed funding and seed financing to help a new program get started. Yeah, um, not for this year and, and um, not to add on, but we should be thinking about, Marcy, and, um, when Avalon comes on board and we start expanding, um, you know, affordable housing uh, in New Cane and what impact that may have Right. on the demand for your services. And I think we need to get ahead of that and start looking at uh, yeah. what percentage of our services are being utilized from existing sources and the multiplier that may exist on, on other uh, providers that are in here as well as your, your own yeah. department. Yeah. So it's a great good it, point. Yeah. It's a great point. And it's, not, the, it's not gonna be less. No. Yeah. no. One of the things we're trying to do with urgent assessment is to gather insights and information about what the gaps are. Because if they're calling urgent assessment, that means they don't know where else to go. And we're encouraging them to really understand the use cases so that we can learn about like what's going on in the youth areas. And I know they've done really good work with the schools based on what's coming in. And I think there's a similar opportunity around seniors, Jim, to why are they not coming in? And when people do come in, what are they presenting? Right, with? right. And so that'll help us understand the overall ecosystem. And I think Silver Hill is really open to being part of our research and our deeper understanding. And I'm not sure if it's that they don't know where to go or if that 
there's like an eight week wait to really see like, especially like psychiatry. So like, you know, I just think that this really meets a need, not that they don't know where to go, but that they can be seen and diagnosed and yeah. have a game plan in a yeah. little less than- I mean, we've been weeks. reporting on quantitative measures, right? And how many people have been seen every, every month or whatever. At some point in time, we need to look at qualitative measures and qualitative being people come in, are they navigating them to another source to get the care? Well, they are, and they they hire, they've hired, um, Peter, you were at the meeting and I should have brought my notes from that meeting, but they have hired two more people and yeah. one woman actually does a follow-up phone call a week later, two weeks later, makes sure that they have gotten in to see somebody that they are following through with services. And their survey seems like it's, people are like pleased with the service and that it is and it's, like- And it's working. gotten better it's over gotten time better, yeah. when they had some misfires on, are you happy with the treatment you're getting afterwards? Right. The numbers in the first year were tougher, right. especially the first few months. And I was telling them, God, you should slice this by year because right. I know the numbers are changing. Um, I'm more concerned. It's called an urgent assessment, right? So you call in, you get a navigator, but when do you get the actual assessment and FaceTime? Within, you know, that, that was the qualitative piece. Yeah, or it absolutely can be yeah. same day and they've got even more flex, but they're looking very much at the word urgent. Yeah. Because yes. there's some people, they believe that they have a problem, but they're saying, oh, but it's not urgent. Oh. And so they're not, but they do because people don't really know. I don't realize what crisis is. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's what the psychiatrist slow. was saying. He was saying it's not emergent and it's not emergency. It's urgent. But like you know, does the layman know the difference between emergent no. and urgent? And so, you know, those are questions. A yeah. ARP but, did a national study, and one of the reasons that seniors hang back until it's a <laughs> a deluge of a problem or really out of control is that they think they've been around long enough that we can handle any of this craziness that goes on daily. But in point of fact, actually, and building on that, I'm introducing Jeff, Dr. Jeff Katzman from Silver Hill, who's one of the world's leading loneliness people on Friday at the men's club. You can, women can't come, but you could watch it on TV. <laughs> oh, wow, that's so wow. nice. TV. Well, we got to get the men's the men squared away man. first. <laughs> anyway, during this period, I know from Jeff's- uh, Way to tee it up, Peter. Thank you. It's only for men. From Jeff's slides yeah, and from wrong. my intro, comp, we're going to be flacking on the uh, urgent assessment program because I think part of it is the, that low number is education. Yeah. What channel can we watch that on? Yeah. Us girls. Zoom. 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 Girl channel. <laughs> One thing that's really interesting though, when you when you talk to the psychiatrists, the admissions folks, everybody who comes in has a different story. Yeah. And um, and it's a judgment call and they think there's something. And then sometimes it's we have to see someone right right now. And, and they the, do make that time. Like again, they, I gave an example of the school system was really concerned about a child and they saw him immediately. Yeah, so they're trying to, what's really interesting and important is they're trying to adjust the program based on the learnings. And I, by the way, I think we have an opportunity here when we're covering off the grantees, you know, there is the opportunity to ask questions to in this continuous improvement category so that the people in this room, because we know a lot can actually ask some good questions and help them raise their game in a constructive, collaborative way. And, uh, and to me, that's really important criteria. Like if, if we're granting money to somebody and they're just like, thank you very much. But if they're actually listening and wanting to get better, I think that should be our expectation when we're, when we're providing uh, cash and not to be, you know, school marm or, you know, mm -hmm. a jerk, yeah. but just to be constructive. Yeah. Well, I, I think that goes to the qualitative piece of it, and we'll end it here. Hopefully, it's that you know, once we give the money and everything, we we should be able to track and and make those recommendations and qualitatively look at 
look at some programs and maybe have the liaisons reporting back specifically on it and giving some agenda time for that. Yeah. But Marcia, do you, do you feel like these grants really reflect, you came with us to us last month with the, some priorities that you felt were the most important. Yeah, do you I think do. this is reflecting that? I do. Yeah, I feel like, um, you know, Meals on Meals and the Get About really focuses on social isolation and kids in crisis and, you know, um, child, uh, DVCC, like they, they're all, they all follow what our priorities are. I think kids in crisis is, is going to be good for you know, addressing yeah. substance abuse and that kind of thing. Um, but, but we will track, we will track in kids in crisis yeah. and all these others that the positions are filled and yeah. that the monies are going being, into being seen yeah. and whatever. That's the qualitative piece that we still are. She said that, you know, she wants to be as transparent as she can. And, you know, if I want to come in to the school every, mm -hmm. you know, quarterly and meet with my, let's see what's going on. Yeah, it's a great idea. Yeah, it's great. To Jim's question about process, though, I think, I think we're we're comfortable with this, but now you can start going to have dialogues. And I think we vote after you get the input from the board of selectmen, finance, and all that. I'm just trying to figure out when no, our vote well, is because we've done our work, so we whittled it down to two forty three eight fifty, so fifteen off. Right. Um, and we will just submit this to. First select them selectmen, yeah. probably board of finance. They different numbers give the OK or well. they make changes. So we don't really decide it comes back to us. No, but we do do that vote. We vote at some well, I mean, point. We this we decide for these are wishes, but they have the final say. They have the final say, but we're supportive. Thank you. I think this is, a, I'm yeah. reading the rumor. We're yeah. very supportive of this, you going forward yeah, with no, this. this is, OK, this is great. that's great. That's good work. Really. Great, thank you guys. Great. Thank you. Yeah, well talked. I mean, on these new one time. Good. I'm glad. Yeah, I think that. Yeah. yeah. Process has yeah. reared its because head. Um, well, that's why she gets paid a very high salary. Creative, right? Yeah. yeah. Peter, I'm I'm thinking, oh, this is a calling. Did you, you say that the urgent assessment has had 15 oh, I can cases even the last that. two months? Yeah, if I'm okay, and then there's a few from that, the that's, rest a, of, that's an up to yeah. significant. Yeah, that we were at eight, nine, ten for a long time. Yeah. That's any, any, any idea, idea why? That's positive sign. What, what they would say is I suggest general awareness. It's a remarkable. Uh, no, it, mine's a scribe. Oh, so I don't know. So we'll see. Oh, that's I suggest it's the election. <laughs> it's a kinder. Yeah. Well, we've yeah. got to be able to yeah. raise it. Yeah. Yeah. Lower what? Lower threshold of services. Some of those stuff that's usually going on. Right. That's yeah. a good. That's a really good. Yeah. Yeah. We don't. What I thought was. Chairman, get back control of me. Uh huh. What? Russ, you have an urgent call. Along those lines, though, is their outreach is continuing, and we're seeing more people from Darien. Maybe Marcy plays a role in that too. Um, I haven't been a Darian that, you know, if these numbers keep coming up like that, that's significant because for the first year and a half, we're like yeah. 10 max. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's great. good. That's great. Yeah. And if they're hiring more people to do this. Yeah. yeah. And also I think from emergency departments is, is that's where our people otherwise go. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Now. right. Yeah. Just, yes. So. Did you, what did you just say about the threshold? Oh, just there may be people may be understanding that there's a lower threshold to seek help, mm -hmm. right? And Which is good. That's that's the message to get out is that you don't have to wait for total crisis mode to right. go to go seek help, right? And in fact, you shouldn't. It, exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. And well, that's why these programs yeah. exist. Is it's yeah. not about full blown crisis. It's about mm -hmm. getting you plugged in and right. not letting you get there. Right? I think qualitatively, what I observe is that there's more slow burn. Yeah. People who are going to merchant assessment where it just it is not going well, it is not going well. If there's mm -hmm. like an incident, that's 911. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's the confusion around urgent, but mm -hmm. there's that sinking feeling that every day it's just feeling tougher mm -hmm. and tougher. And I think that I mean, anecdotally, that's what I hear. People are showing up. Um, I think they call well, it urgent. Every age cohort. I mean, you could say the same for seniors, you know, the same for children and get pushed back and pushed back until there's an acute care episode and all of a sudden you're in the emergency department and the family's coming around and going, okay, we didn't realize dad or mom were in this bad a condition. I then look at their home and go, oh my God, what have they been eating? 
and uh, and people, things like get about and other things where you can actually see them and engage with them and and hopefully give a referral for follow up. I think is very very important. Yeah, it's the pre. You want to get something free crisis. That's the tragedy. That's the lower we've been talking about. The lower threshold. I love that. Yeah. That's to me. That's the real goal here. Is this agreed? How how do referrals work for the urgent yeah. assessment program? Because if the schools are kind of can reach out and they can come around, but how is it like if get about notices something is? Do we have a process There's in a place number that you can call? So like I've had families reach out to me about knowing someone that needed help or was asking for help and, and there's an actual number that I can give them to call, which is huge because it used to be that it was sort of like, well, here's three organizations, mm -hmm. try these people, try these people, but there is a phone number to say, call here and you can get sort of into this process and then it's Silver Hill really. But, if, but does the person themselves have to initiate they that have call? To, they have to want to go so like a parent right. can call or a child can call but the person they're calling about has to be willing to call so it's not the same as calling like protective services right right or, or a 911 right but to her, to her point though it doesn't always have to be a call i mean we get referrals all the time from someone who goes and visits someone and they call us and say what resources are available we have an issue or a problem, and then we have to try to reach out and find a, an influencer, for lack of a better term, for the individual. And it may be reaching out to one of their, their, their friends or family members and discuss the problem. So it's not as always as clear cut as I've got a problem, like I'm, here's my number and I'm going to call. Sometimes it's the people that are around you uh, will reach out and try to find you know, available resources for you. Um, and that happens as Barb can attest. And I think Tom as well happens to us all the time. Yes. So, Alyssa, can is there an opportunity then to create a better process or like a more streamlined process for those who are like dropping off meals or do we think it's working as is? If there's concerns. Right. Yeah. Hmm. I have a question at the other end is the, I'm understanding somewhere I got the number of 70% of the people that come in for assessment require a follow-up and there's the soft handoff. And I'm wondering how that's working because I rec recall this thing that I've said before that it was 57,000 a month for uh, residents at Silver Hill and that's unaffordable for most and it's unnecessary probably for a lot of those people. Do you have any sense of the soft handoff and what the yeah. menu of, of well, they've got lots, options are? They've got a lot of data on that. Um, and the whole point is to understand diagnostically what's going on and what level of care they need. Um, the tricky part has been uh, insurance because yeah. okay. some people can't afford, they're, they're, they're making it work, mm -hmm. but it's that's the big fly in the ointment. Mm -hmm. But there is progress from an insurance point of view, uh, accepting all of this, but it's all the whole, it's the different levels of care. Like sometimes, and I think there are very few, I'm, I'm trying to remember, there are people who've gone straight into Silver Hill that right. day, but not many. Right. Yeah. Right. But they're but they're ready for that. That's the extreme. But most of it is just a quality therapist. But that is part Mr. Of Mr. Chairman, who is who's our liaison here? To, okay. Do you want to just give um, put him on the agenda for for next month and maybe flush it out a little bit from a qualitative standpoint? Since we have so many questions that are coming, maybe yeah, I was gonna say this is one of the big innovations of this town. So and I know well, a lot of people are watching. Susanna's really good and super open and collaborative. And, That's what I'm saying. I mean, oh yeah, you on the agenda and, and maybe answer some of the qualitative instead of trying to do it here. Yes, well, I've spoken to Suzanne on a number of occasions and yes, they are on top of things. And yes, from the start of the program to now, it is better. Um, one of the issues was they look at everything. They look at your insurance, the finances. They try to fix this person with the right therapist, right. psychiatrist, mm -hmm. social worker, whatever. And uh, I think that's improved with time. It was, yeah, there was some negativity early on. I haven't heard anything recently, not that there isn't any, but putting the wrong person with, you know, just didn't work. 
And um, so, and then nothing's perfect. So, yeah. but I think it's, it's a good system and they're very attuned to that in terms of where we're going with quality. Yeah. Well doing what they can do. Your idea is good. Well said. Um, so our grants are done, right? Yes. Yes, come on. Um, Mercy. Next, uh, <laughs> Health and Human Services Commission 25, Barb Backenbaum and Jen Laddick, where their terms are ending and they both want to continue, which is great for the commission. So that's, that's done. Um, okay, our next meeting, December 5th. So we have, we are into the holiday season. So we've heard what the police are doing. Oh, yeah. that's that yeah. So, um, and we can address this at the next meeting, but the papers, do we want to get that going uh, in terms of, you know, what we did with alcohol or substance abuse Sorry. and all that? Because I think as a commission, do we want to continue doing this? Oh, and the advertiser, the the Sentinel now or whatever? Yeah. I mean, we can do that. We, you mean, you mean for Marcy to write a letter saying, here's what we got. Do you, do you, do you have, have the budget? We, we do you have, have the budget? We do. In a, in, yeah, we have like a small line oh, budget. Right. Okay. Like, oh, you just have to connect with issues. each paper. Yeah. Bethany probably has the information. I will look through her and, stuff. Uh, she must have like a... Yeah, and then see you know, what Lance they'll do. Weiner, when he was on the commission, was able to negotiate that for free every year. Oh, I don't know nice. how. Yeah. Not but like, there's well, a change of management. Marcy, I can, I can put you into touch with our marketing to be a change of management. Okay. They get freebies all the time. We're okay. happy to all right. work with you, collaborate awesome. with you. Okay. Great. All right. Yeah. And then, that, and then thinking ahead for the holiday gift distribution. Yes. Last year's gifts were. It was yes, fun. Was really I, I am. I am starting work on that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but those gift baskets are like amazing. They're personalized yeah, too. So they I'll, are. I'll, I'll, yes. Marcy knows what what, what gets, every yeah. single person you know yeah. enjoys. That's so that's that's we, we can help you with that. The delivery. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, or you didn't my, ask. Okay. You didn't ask. <laughs> Marcy, we. I, I don't know if we have the money or the resources, but I can be happy to deliver more than I. I know. You know what it is? It's actually for me, it's time consuming getting like, you know, learning about the person and then Finding out what's right every, for them. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's so yeah. I'm I try to I mean with hope yeah. it will increase, but right now I gotta keep it to what's humanly possible. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great. How do you phrase it? Just what do you want on your Santa list? Or? Well, I kind of just talk. The, most of them are my clients because they're seniors. So I sort of know, like, if I've done home visits, I know that one has a dog or one has a cat or okay. one enjoys walking, one hates coffee. And I like <laughs> I get to know them all. So, um, yeah, that's great to personalize it like that. Yeah. Okay, Russ, I think you're the closer. Your thing. Um, I thank everyone for being here today and uh, thank you both. Um, motion to adjourn. Okay. All in favor, aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank and then you put them back. Yeah. Well, then we better do it. Oh, yeah. I think that's it. Those are kids. Yeah. I had a great job. I was on the side. Yeah. This year, I didn't want to get them. Thank you. That was great. Yeah. I probably would call it. I'm sure there's a lot of great jobs. Yeah. I don't know. You have to do it. You have to do it. Yeah. I'll send it to you and I'll send you um, yeah, the, 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 yeah. the song text.